Hi, this is a short demo of hosting .NET Core runtime in a custom native host. So I'll have a C++ app that will load .NET Core in process. It will create an app domain and launch uh, load manage code and run it uh, from, from the custom host. We have documentation on this scenario. If you go out to docs.microsoft.com and look under .NET Core Tutorials .NET Core Hosting, uh, this explains how how to do this, and in fact, it explains that there are two different interfaces that are commonly used for hosting .NET Core. The first one is mscoreee.h. This one's been around a little bit longer, is a little bit lower level, and these docs go into quite a bit of detail, step by step, how to host the .NET Core runtime using mscoreee.h and the ICLR Runtime Host 2 interface. The other option, which is mentioned towards the end of the docs, is another API called coreclrhost.h. Now in these docs, uh, they talk about coreclrhost.h as being a preferred hosting option cross-platform for you know, Linux and Mac, ho Mac hosts. In fact, either interface works on Windows or cross-platform. Uh, the reason that coreclrhost is recommended for Linux here is because it's a little bit higher level, doesn't have the Windows-isms of mscoreee.h. But, in fact, they, they both work fine in either scenario. Uh, actually, since CoreCLR host is the simpler API, which require fewer calls by your host, this is actually the recommended API for any hosting scenario nowadays uh, on Windows, Linux, Mac, wherever, if it meets your needs. Now, mscoreee.h has a few more options, but uh, in general, this one is going to be sufficient and it's a little bit easier to work with. So um, as one of the follow-ups to recording this video, I'm going to be updating these docs over the next few weeks to give equal billing to both CoreCLR host and MS Core EE. But for the purposes of this demo, we're going to be using uh, CoreCLR host.h, which um, you can find on GitHub. If you go out to .NET CoreCLR and then look under source CoreCLR hosts, includes our inc. CoreCLR host.h, this is um, the API we're going to be using. You can see there's really only a few APIs. There's the initialize method, which will start the runtime and create your primary app domain for you. It returns the, a handle to the host and the domain ID. We then have uh, a couple simple APIs for shutting down the runtime and some APIs for getting into managed code. One create delegate will create a function pointer to whatever managed method you, you pointed at, and the other uh, execute assembly, you point at a managed executable and it will start the main method and, and run that exe in process. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the sample. And I have this sample up uh, on my GitHub repository under MJ Russo's sample core CLR host. And I actually have two hosts. I have the host with MS Core EE, which is a sample I've had up here for a while that explains how to do the MS Core EE hosting that I talked about earlier. And what I've just added now is host with Core CLR host, which is the code we're going to look at today. These are currently in the Core CLR host branch, but uh, over the next few days I'm going to merge these into master. So let's go ahead and take a look at the code. Uh, like I said, it's fairly straightforward. This particular uh, sample, I wanted to make it more than just a hello world. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the native host call a managed method, which then calls back into native code using a supplied callback function, because this is a scenario that a customer asked about recently and I think is interesting. So maybe we'll start by looking at our managed code. So this is the managed assembly that I build using the .NET CLI. Uh, super simple, one public static method called do work. And do work takes a string, which is the job name, and it takes a number of iterations. And that's just the number of times that we're going to loop through this, this for loop, which is pretending to do work. It doesn't actually really do anything. But uh, we tell it how many times to iterate through the loop. And we provide an array of doubles that just gets round-tripped to managed code and then back to native because it's returned as a string. Again, this is all just sort of a contrived sample method, but the thing that's interesting to see here is that we need to use the marshal as attribute to explain how to marshal this array to native uh, to and from native code, since in uh, our C++ app this is just going to be um, a, a double pointer, and we won't know the length, so we specify that this parameter is the size of the array, 
And then here's the interesting part. We have a delegate, which is defined here as taking an integer as input and returning an integer. And this delegate is going to be pointing at a native function that this method can call to call back into the host. So what happens is we loop through this loop um, a number of times equal to iterations. Each time we say which iteration we're on, we wait for a second, and then we call that supplied callback delegate, providing i, and then we write to the console whatever this uh, call returns. Once we've done this the number of times indicated by the input parameters, we will return a string that just says data received, and um, the array of doubles formatted as a string. So simple little dummy method, but it does a couple of interesting things with marshalling parameters and including this, this callback delegate. So over in the native host then, let's take a look at the steps we need. So first here we define uh, a type that is going to be our the, the type def for the function pointer that will translate into that delegate. And you can see it has the same shape. It takes an int, returns an int. Uh, we also define the, um, the, the function pointer type for the managed API itself that we're going to be calling. So you can see this is that same, um, that same signature with a name that's a string. In this case, it's a const car star uh, after marshalling. And you know, we see here that we, yeah, actually I forgot to put marshal as LP stir. I should have. Um, does the right thing, fortunately, for the sake of my demo, but I should have uh, uh, a marshal as attribute on there just to be uh, explicit about it. Then we have ints for the iterations, the size of the array. Here's the array itself. And then the callback function is, of course, of this type. So let's take a look at the code. First thing that we do is we get uh, the core CLR um, library, whether that's coreclr.dll on Windows, or if it is libcoreclr.so on Linux. You can see I've got those just hard-coded in here. Now, normally, one of the first things you see a host do is it goes and probes about trying to find coreclr. In this case, we're not running arbitrary managed code. We're running managed code that ships as part of this solution. And so we know that coreclr is going to be right next to the host itself. So this is pretty simple. We don't have to probe about or anything. We just look at the current executables path, and we know that core CLR lives there. We also know that the managed assembly that we'll be loading later on lives there as well. So we construct those strings. On Windows, we use load library to load core CLR. On Linux, it'll be a DL open. Either way, we get a handle to that library. We then uh, get references to the APIs we're going to need within that library, which are going to be the initialize API, create delegate, since we're calling uh, an arbitrary method, not just starting a main, and then the shutdown uh, API for once we're done. And again, I've got code paths here for Windows and for Linux. On Windows, it's just going to be get proc address, and on Linux, it's going to be dlsim. Check to make sure that we got those, nothing's null. Then we have to construct what's called the TPA list. So when you have native code, that's going to host .NET Core and process. It's responsible for providing the list of trusted platform assemblies when it creates the app domain. So trusted platform assemblies are managed assemblies that are known to be part of the .NET platform and are treated sort of similarly to like what the global assembly cache was to .NET framework. So this will include things like you know system .dll, system .runtime system private core lib, ms core lib, all of those sorts of things. And so in our case, um, we build this with a helper function, which is just going to iterate through all DLLs in uh, the same directory as coreclr.dll uh, or libcoreclr.so, and it's going to put those in a list. Um, nothing fancy. It's just creating a list of all the DLLs in, the current, in that current directory, because we know that those are the platform assemblies. We also are going to specify an app paths um, property, which is the directories where we go to probe for assemblies that are not found on the trusted platform assemblies list. So if we're executing managed code and the runtime needs to load an assembly, a managed assembly, the first thing it does is it looks at the TPA list. And if um, the assembly is present uh, on the TPA list, it loads the assembly from whatever location is given there. Otherwise, it will go and it will search in the app path directories to see if any managed assemblies are present there that, that match the 
uh, identity of the assembly that it's trying to load. Now there are other properties you might use. Commonly you have app and iPads, which is where you load native images from. Native DLL search directories, which is the directories that you go and search for native DLLs in when they're needed for managed code. Um, also, since we have an iPads here, it reminds me that the TPA list would include both the native images and the IL um, DLLs, and it will load the first matching item on the list, so make sure that you put the NIs first if that's important for your scenario, which typically it is. There are other properties. These are the common ones. In our case, this host is so simple that we only need these two, TPAs and app paths. So the values are the TPA list string that we constructed earlier from the DLLs that are on the current path. And then the, the current runtime path is the app path where we'll go probe. We don't have any other directories we need to look in in this case because, again, we're not running arbitrary managed code like some hosts might, like the .NET um, host, but we're just running one particular piece of managed code which is shipping alongside this host. Okay, so once we've constructed these values, now we're able to actually go and start the runtime. So we call initialize core CLR, which was uh, this function here that we got out of uh, lib core CLR SO or core CLR .dll. We specify the app domain base path, give the app domain a, a friendly name, we provide those properties, and we get back the host handle and domain ID. Now, unlike using MS Core EE, core CLR host.h is a little bit easier because here we just call one API that's going to start the runtime and create our initial domain. So it's all kind of rolled up here what would have been multiple calls with MS Core EE. So at this point now, the .NET runtime's running, the, the JIT is up and ready to go, the garbage collector's running, the execution engine's online, and we have an app domain. So all that's left is to load something into that app domain and execute it. So for that, we are going to call create manage delegate. We specify the host handle and domain ID that were returned previously. And then here we specify what managed code we want a delegate to. We specify the assembly first, then the namespace qualified type, and finally the method name. Um, we get back um, a populated function pointer, which we pass in here. This is our do work pointer instance. Uh, you remember we defined this earlier. And so this will populate this with a pointer to that um, managed code. And once we have that, it's as easy as just invoking it. So we construct our um, data, array, our doubles array of data that we just sort of round trip through managed code as a, as a sample, and then we we invoke manage delegate. We pass in a string for the the job ID or, or the job name. Uh, here's our iteration count is going to be five, so it'll be five iterations of that managed loop. We specify the size of the array and the array itself, and then we specify our callback function, which in our case is a function called report progress callback. Down here you can see all it does is it prints out whatever was passed to it for managed code, and then it returns back to net managed code the inverse of that integer. Or not the multiplicative inverse, but the opposite, the negative of that of that integer. So we're going to call that. We'll get back a string, you remember, which is just going to be a string representation of the data array. We're going to write to output the string we get back, and then we call shutdown core CLR to um, unload the app domain and shut down the runtime. Then we'll um, close the um, library handle we have open. And that is that. Uh, like I said, this is all up online. Let's go ahead and run it and see it in action. So here is... Um, a Linux machine where I have cloned that repository. I've built it and I will run sample host. Okay, it says we've loaded core CLR from this path, created an app domain, we created our delegate, and then we begin work. Here's iteration one. And you can see this was here was from the the managed method writing to the console. And then it calls the native function callback that was provided and this was written from our host in that callback function. Then it returns to managed code, and the managed code says, oh, this is what I got back. And then it goes on to iteration two, it does our five iterations, says that work's done. Uh, so this is the end of output from our managed code. And then the host says, here's what we received back from that managed method that we invoked. And then we shut down the core CLR. So this is a custom
.NET Core host, uh, just an arbitrary C++ app that loads Core CLR in process and executes managed code. We can do the same thing on uh, Windows if we like. So we'll come in here and we'll execute, let's see, we need to go to bin, let's see, where am I? Okay, bin, Windows, sample host. And this is going to look real familiar. It goes through five work iterations. We see the callback uh, function in the host writing to the output. We see the managed code writing to the output. And it looks just like it did on Linux. So uh, this works cross-platform, of course, being um, .NET Core. And that's just a quick demo. I hope you check out the uh, sample on GitHub if you want to sort of look at that. And like I said, over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be updating the docs on docs.microsoft.com to detail both this approach to hosting through CoreCLRhost.h and uh, through MS Core EE.